Hello to everybody, I'm Marco Beato, Associate Professor in Sport and Exercise Science. Today we will evaluate a non-parametric alternative to pair t-test. If you remember last time, during the last lesson, we evaluated t-test and I will do the same procedure uh, again. So we went here on pair sample t-test. Uh, we choose a pair sample t-test because the subject in the baseline and the post were the same. We move our variables here in variable pairs. And as you can see here on the right, you have your pair sample t-test. So measure one, measure two, that equivalent to standing long jump, baseline, standing long jump, post. And as you can see here, we have a p-value. After we run some other analysis, like a descriptive analysis, or we evaluate also the mean difference and the confidence interval. Okay, as you can see here, you have mean difference, confidence interval at 95% and the p-value. And here you have the descriptive analysis where you have the mean of the baseline, the mean of the post and the standard deviation of both variables. However, we didn't run a specific analysis. It is a assumption. So if you go here on the left, you can see it is written assumption checks and in particular, a normality assumption. So before to run a parametric analysis, we should evaluate the data are normally distributed. So if we click here, you can see that the software run for you a specific normality test. It is called Shapiro Wilk test. In this case, the output should be a p-value above 0 0.05, because a significant result suggests a deviation from normality. So in this case, the software and the analysis reveal that the data are normally distributed. So there isn't a deviation from normality. So in this specific case, we can run a, a parametric test. So in this case, a pair sample t-test. What happens when we want to analyze maybe a, another sample, and maybe this sample is not uh, normally distributed. So let's see our second example. So I need to run a second pair sample t-test. In this case, we use the contour jump baseline and contour jump post. As you can hear, I can see here the software give for you a, a analysis that is a pair sample t-test. And as you can see here, we have a p value of 0 0.012. However, as we said before, before to run this analysis, we should check the assumption, uh, in this case, the normality. If I check this assumption, I can see that, that there is a significant result that suggests a deviation, a deviation from normality. As you can see here, a p-value of 0 0.021. This means that I shouldn't run a parametric test in this case. So I should choose an alternative. The alternative is a non-parametric analysis. In this case, it's called Wilcoxon Signed Rank. And uh, in the software, I remove my uh, science test. I replace that with this new uh, non-parametric test. And I will have also in this case a p-value. But as you can see, there are some specific differences. I don't have a t value, but I have a Z score, okay? And uh, if I want to evaluate our descriptive data, I will have my mean standard deviation, but in the moment that I want to evaluate uh, the location parameter and the confidence interval, as you can see here, you have a Hodges lemma estimate and Hodges Lehman estimate 95% confidence interval. So there are some variation between a student's test and a Wilcoxon senior rank. There is also another uh, difference and uh, is related to the FX size. With a t-test, you have a coin D score. In this case, you have a rank serial correlation. Okay, so if I go above and I check, for example, in the previous test that I analyzed uh, the FX size, as you can see here, you have a coin D value. Here at the country, we have, for the non-parametric analysis, a rank P0 correlation. The two FX size cannot be compared because uh, they have a different uh, um, 
different value and they are not equivalent. So you need to evaluate uh, uh, the rank area correlation as a non-parametric uh, FX size. Thank you very much for following this video and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.